Today we're going to get into nine facts that'll help you understand U.S. government shutdowns, how it operates, and what it might mean. Welcome to The Trending Report, brought to you by USA Financial. The Trending Report is a bi-weekly show that aims to focus on the trend lines rather than the headlines. Each episode features commentary around the state of the market, as well as other factors that may impact your personal finances. The host of The Trending Report is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. The Trending Report is educational and not intended as personal financial advice. Welcome to The Trending Report. Today we're going to talk about nine different facts that will help you understand uh, a little bit about U.S. government shutdowns, how they work, how they operate, uh, how they come to be, uh, what that impact might be uh, moving forward, and how it may affect the stock market. Now, we'll also jump into our normal traditional stock market data, uh, and that will be for data ending last Friday, which was September 22nd. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Now, on the left here, I've got uh, a U.S. government uh, shutdown chart that just show, goes back to 1976 and gives you a feel for some of the length of time of the shutdowns and some of the frequency of the shutdowns. They happen more often than people realize. In fact, over the last 50 years, uh, there have been 21 government shutdowns over that five-decade period. Uh, and with the colors here, we've got it kind of color-coded for first, second, and third shutdowns in a year. Um, because sometimes what happens is they'll negotiate to extend for a little bit, uh, and then when that ends, they have to negotiate again or they have to come to a conclusion. Uh, so you can see what some of that's like over here. And U.S. governments, uh, the, the shutdowns for non-essential federal employees means that they're essentially furloughed uh, and, and they are suspended. And then essential employees continue to work, but neither one of them are getting paid when that happens. Now, when operations resume, their paycheck backfills and they do get that money back. Uh, so they're not working for free. They do continue to get paid. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, everything kind of locks up as you would imagine. Now, the structure of how this operates, this goes back to 1980 uh, with U.S. Attorney General Benjamin Civiletti uh, and his kind of idea for how these things could be structured to operate. And if I go to this next set of bullets, uh, every year, Congress is expected to pass 12 appropriations bills uh, that fund all of the various government and the agency programs. And they have to do this by September 30th because the fiscal year for the government starts on October 1, not January 1, but on October 1. And uh, the last time that all 12 of these bills was passed by Congress by the deadline was in 1997. So obviously, this is a common occurrence now. This is just kind of the typical way that things operate. But the reason that this chart over here is not riddled with, with closures and shutdowns is because there's this thing called the continuing resolution or a CR. And what can happen is if they're not hitting their deadline, Congress can pass a continuing resolution, which will extend and allow the government to continue to operate. And it, it will extend for sometimes weeks, sometimes days, sometimes uh, months, whatever it might be. Um, and on three occasions, it's actually lasted for the entire fiscal year. So they didn't even try. Uh, they basically just created a continuing resolution uh, to get them through the year. Now, without the continuing resolution, the government does, in fact, shut down. And <coughs> excuse me, the longest one was under President Trump for uh, a total of 36 days during that period of time. Now, historically, when the government does shut down, it's surprisingly not that big of a reaction out of the markets. In fact, the S&P 500 has actually risen during the last five government shutdowns. But the shutdown can create a lot of volatility. Uh, you'll see big swings in the market, both up and down. And even though in 2018 and 19, during that 36 days that we're looking at right here, uh, the, the market dropped in the first day by 2.7%, but then it rebounded by 5% the day after that. And at the end of the 36-day shutdown, uh, it was actually up 10%. So uh, although it's volatile, it doesn't seem to have a terribly bad impact uh, on the market. And then from a uh, economic standpoint, it does definitely cost money 
because you're losing some of your economies of scale, some of your efficiencies and so on. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not overly expensive, uh, but they do believe from 2018 going into 2019, that shutdown costs uh, the economy about $3 billion. Now, they're saying the economy. So all in all, uh, for as large as the economy represents, uh, $3 billion is relatively small, but still a uh, an awfully uh, large amount of money. Now, if we take a look at the markets themselves, uh, is kind of what's ramping up towards September 30. What you'll see is, uh, first of all, when we look at capitalization, we're going from small cap all the way to large cap. And we're taking the overall stock market here as our sample and illustrating it over to the right. Now, when you see green on this page, it's uh, it means it's tilting to the bullish. When you see red, it's tilting to the bearish. And then we have the long-term trend versus the short-term swings. And as you can see, the short-term swing is running red. It doesn't really matter uh, which capitalization piece we're looking at, whereas the trend is uh, is green on the upper half, red on the lower half. And, and what's really lifting the market right now is large caps. Uh, you're seeing the S&P 100, the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, uh, and, and the like. Down here at the bottom, you'll notice, notice we're seeing mid caps and small caps. So it's really the larger capitalization uh, uh, stocks that are kind of lifting the market right now. Now, throughout here, we're seeing a nice, solid bullish trend. But as you can see right here, we hit a resistance cap in these two places, and that is literally driving the swing back down to the bearish. And we're seeing that taking place right here with the red that's showing up. Uh, and then the decline on the trend, even though we are still staying bullish on the trend right now. Now, if we look at sectors here, we're looking at the 11 different sectors that make up the S&P 500. And if we take the equal weighting of all of that, uh, again, you'll see a, a trend looking nice up, upward, but then we're seeing the swing starting to come back down. We see the same or similar reflection down in here, as we saw a moment ago. Um, but we're we're getting that uh, that overall green trend is still taking place. We've got energy and financials and telecom that are essentially lifting the market. Down here, we've got materials and healthcare and real estate, which is tending to draw it back down. And then as we move on to international equity, here we're seeing a lot more red on the board. Uh, everything is uh, is showing up on both the trend and the swing as being quite negative, quite bearish. You've got uh, nowhere near the incline coming through here that we saw on the previous page, although we are getting this swing uh, that is, is taking place back down here. We've got the red swing right here. And then uh, the trend comes here and we are seeing it come down to the bearish levels as well after all of this uh, bullish that was in the middle. Um, so again, uh, the international is not doing as well as the United States. It will be interesting to see if they both tend to go and, and move into a true bearish format with both the swing and the trend, or if we're able to kind of bounce back up off that trend, uh, the power of the trend, and, and get the swing back into, into bullish territory. And then finally, last but not least, if we look at the bond market, the bond market uh, has, has been kind of a mess for quite some time here. We've got nothing but bearish red flashing at us on this board. Uh, the overall bond market is, is buoyed, although negatively bearishly being buoyed by some of the short term type bonds and then the longer term treasuries are what's kind of pulling it down. Here you can see the trend turned bearish just about at uh, the beginning of June. And we've got a stiff downward trend and swing, uh, lots of red swing taking place in here as well. So as we approach October 1, September 30 being the deadline for the government, uh, it will be interesting to watch and see if A, we're uh, going to get a, a continuation, uh, which we most likely will. Uh, but if not, uh, how will that in fact affect the markets, and we'll obviously be diving into that next time. Thanks again for listening to this episode of The Trending Report, powered by USA Financial. We invite you to visit usafinancial.com to find out more about our work with independent advisors and their clients all around the country.
Any projections, targets, or estimates in this report are forward-looking statements and are based on the firm's research, analysis, and assumptions. Due to the rapidly changing market conditions and the complexity of investment decisions, supplemental information and other sources may be required to make informed investment decisions. All expressions of opinions are subject to change without notice. Clients should seek financial advice regarding the appropriateness of investing in any security or investment strategy discussed.